Hey everybody, it's Chris, and tonight we're going to look at the truth. Now if you know anything about the truth, you know there's a few discs that are associated with it. You've got truth tooled verdicts, you've got pre-Sweden truths, you've got EMAC truths, you've got the new flight number truths. So how do we, how do we describe all those discs, and what is the difference? Um, it's a good question, it's a question that gets asked often. So to try and answer that, I'm going to take you over to this table over here that you see, and we're going to do a visual display of some of the different runs, the Truth Tooled Verdicts, the Amworld's Truth, um, First Run Truth, and look at some of the differences in both flight characteristics and the stamps so you can figure out what's what. Um, and then we're going to go out to the field so you can see those flights. So if I tell you an Amworld's Truth is straighter with more reliable fade than a current truth, what is that going to look like? Well, I'm going to stack those videos like I do in my reviews so that you can see those two discs in flight and what the difference is. Why did the EMAC truth come into being? Well, let's see what it does so we can take a look at that. So, as always, if you have questions, put them below, but I'm going to keep this short because the table is going to take a little while and then I want to get some throws in there too. So, put those questions and comments below. I look forward to hearing from you and I really hope this video answers some of those questions people have about the truth and why there are a couple different molds there. So, hope you enjoy. Thanks, everybody. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here's a handheld quick look through of the different versions of the truth as it existed and how to tell the differences. So here we have some prototypes. This is a ring stamp prototype and a bar stamp prototype, and these are considered truth-tooled verdicts. Now, you can see this one does say verdict. Now, the question comes, why is it called a truth-tooled verdict? Now, if you look on the back, here on there, there's the tooling, truth. And as the story, I've been, as I understand it is, this was the first attempt at making the truth a very straight flying disc with a reliable fade, uh, the, the mid-range that EMAC really wanted. And when they got these, they tested and they were great, but they were more overstable. So instead of saying, okay, well, let's change what we want the truth to be, they decided, let's change the name, let's call this the verdict, and we'll try the truth again. So these discs became what we now call the verdict. You can see all verdicts now. They don't say truth on the bottom, they say verdict. And they are that nice, reliably overstable, not super overstable, but reliably overstable disc. So the second attempt, here we have a hybrid AM World's Truth and a first run truth. These are the old truths, the, the disc that came out, what, what was expected really. You can see the numbers here, kind of, because of the light, sorry about that. 5502, one that straight flight, reliable fade. And that's kind of what they got here. The Amworld's Truths were considered to be the best flying truths, along with maybe the Chartreuse first runs and the older runs. But these old run truths were more accurate to what was desired out of the flight. Now you can tell these, they still all have the truth tooling. So let me put it down so you can see it. They do say truth, just like those old verdicts did. Uh, and the way you can tell the old runs versus the new runs is you look under the crown, under the tooling, you can see it says www.dynamicdiscs.com, but it doesn't have anything else. This is what people refer to as a pre-Sweden truth. And the difference is, here's a later run truth. It still says 5502, but we're going to talk about how the flight's changed. But if you look on the bottom, under the crown, now it says made in Sweden. So the pre-Swedens don't have the made in Sweden. They just have the, the website. No made in Sweden. So the front hadn't changed, numbers hadn't changed, but the flight did. So what we're starting to see after the Maiden Sweden was put on is the mold seemed to get less and less stable. So although it said 02 still, it wasn't quite flying like that. It was starting to tip over. People were noticing the newer run truths just didn't have the reliability that the older run truths had. So this spawned two new discs, kind of, not really, one new disc. But then we got the EMAC truth and the regular truth. Now notice the difference in the truth. There's a couple of them. Notice, silhouette, 5502. No silhouette, negative 1, 1. This is a more accurate description. If you believe in numbers at all, this is a more accurate description of how discs fly. this disc is going to fly. It's not going to go straight and fade. It is going to turn and it might come back to center. Uh, depending on arm speed, obviously. But this is still the truth. This is the original mold. You can see here's the tooling still. There's the truth. This is the original mold. It just, like we said, like I said, it went from being straight and reliable to starting to turn, and then an acknowledgement of that turn and an acknowledgement on the stamp of here's how it's flying now. But because this is a desired flight, they brought in the EMAC truth. Notice the differences. We're going to start in the front. Small silhouette kind of dancing on the numbers. Large silhouette all the way up through the, the stamp, all the way down to the numbers. 
still says 5502, and that's actually a more uh, accurate description of how this disk flies. And on the bottom, it does still say truth, but above truth, it has Emacs signature. So this is the disk that's going to replace those old straight flying truths. They brought in the Emac truth to cover that. So you have verdicts, old run truths, which became the more understable truth that we have now, and the Emac truth, which has recovered that stable flight. So hope that answers some questions. If you have other ones, please put them below so I can get back to you. But that's a quick look at how the mold changed over time. So here we go out to the field. I'm going to start with the truth tool verdict. I'm going to throw it out wide right and let it do what verdicts do best. Fade back to the center and park the basket. I'm also going to add in a biofusion verdict. I'd heard the new runs weren't quite as overstable, and they might not be quite as overstable, but I still find them to be very reliable, a great addition to my bag to complement the truths and emac truths in there. But the truth was supposed to be a straighter disc. So instead of having that super overstable finish of the verdict, here you can see the Amarold's truth and the pre-Sweden truths are going to have that great straight line, maybe just a touch of fade at the end. And here's the comparison. Thrown in the woods, the verdict's a little bit higher, so account for that. But you can see the truth just pushes straight down the tunnel the entire way, that straight line, whereas the verdict is going to cut left around the corner. And on the second video, although both discs are going to end up in a similar position, notice how they're released. The verdict's going to come out flat, and then you're going to see the stability of the wing kick in and start pulling it around the corner, whereas the Amworld's Truth was actually released on a bit of hyzer and is going to just hold that line the entire time around the corner. And here's one last throw with Truth. A little bit of hyzer on it, holds the line beautifully, skips right up to the basket. So here we are on the current run of Truth. This release was slightly off-center, but you can see it starts to turn and just keeps drifting right. It's a very different flight than the pre-Sweden Truth, the original flight of the Truth. So you can manipulate the release angles like I'm doing here, or you can decide to use this disc as a more understable complement to the old truths. Here is just a big outside Anheuser. I'm going to have it flash across the face of the pin. This disc will hold that line beautifully. So here we go to the stack view. Both discs released fairly flat. The Emerald's Truth is going to have a nice gentle fade toward the pin. The current run of Truth is just going to drift to the right of the trees. With the current run of truth being a more understable version of the mold, the Emac truth was then created to recreate the flight of the old pre-Sweden truths. And that's what you get to see here. Very straight flight, that light, nice gentle fade toward the bucket. And on the stacked view, both of them are released with just a very small touch of hyzer. They're both going to fly a very straight line and then fade gently back toward the basket again. Both are going to give easy putts, very similar lines, very similar flights. Here in the woods, the Amworld's Truth was thrown first, and I actually flexed it just a little bit hard, too hard. So I got to adjust with the Emac Truth because they're so similar and end up parking the basket. But second throws are always easier, right? With the Truth and the Emac Truth being so similar in flight, there is going to end up being some overlap in stabilities when your Emacs start to break in or you get a fresh Truth. So for example, that Blue Sweden Truth I just threw and this red Emac I'm throwing now, these are my two favorite tunnel mids. The only determining factor of which one I'm going to throw that day is whether I'm carrying my bag or rolling my cart. If I'm rolling my cart, you're going to see that blue Sweden Truth. If I'm carrying a bag, you're going to see this red Emac. They're both great flyers. They're two of my favorite mids to throw in general. just depends on what I'm carrying that day. On the understable side, here's a Fusion Truth and a Fusion Emac. You'll notice the Fusion Truth is the more understable of the two. You can throw it flat and expect it to drift right. Whereas the Fusion Emac, even though it's beaten in, is going to hold a more natural straight line. So instead of throwing it flat and letting it drift right, what I'm going to do instead is throw it with a little bit of tilt or with just a little bit more snap to overpower it and get the turn that way. And of course, if you hit too many trees, eventually you end up with a Roller Truth. And I'm going to encourage you to have one of those because look how much fun the dogs have chasing it. As we watch this Farewell Roller and see an Irish Wolfhound run through, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe got a little bit of information about how the Verdict Truth and Emac Truth throw and their history of them, the Verdict being a little more overstable, the Emac Truth being straight with a little bit of fade, and the Truth being straight with a little bit of understable kick. If you like this video, please feel free to like it, share it, comment, give it a thumbs up, or even subscribe to my page. Thanks so much for watching.